This is how I went from this to this, my best silk press ever. I'm going to show you step by step in depth my full silk press routine. So I'm starting off with hair that was in twists and I had just taken it out of the twists. It actually wasn't blow dried, it just naturally stretched. I'm using the Olaplex number eight, which is actually a deep conditioner and I'm putting two pumps per section. So the first pump is focused on the mid shafts and the ends. And then the second, the second pump goes on the roots and any areas that just feel a little bit drier than they usually are. Now, this is the step that's not necessary. If you don't have very dry hair or your hair isn't feeling dry before this, you can just go straight to the wash or you can do a pre-shampoo with any other treatment like the African Pride pre-shampoo or just your favorite conditioner, a leave-in conditioner. I wouldn't suggest oils because that takes a lot of shampoo to wash off and we already want our hair to be as clean as possible. But if you're used to it and you want to go ahead and use an oil, you can do that. So I just tied my hair back and I left that in my hair for about 10 minutes while I had my breakfast. And now it's time to start the wash day. So the same sections I applied the conditioner in is the same sections I will be washing my hair and basically doing everything in the same four sections. So starting with the first section, I thoroughly saturated it. Then I'm going in with my Red Ken cleansing cream. This is actually a detox shampoo and I would highly recommend using a detox or a clarifying shampoo before you do a silk press because it's going to get rid of all the dirt, all the grime, all the buildup, anything that could possibly weigh your hair down or make your hair become frizzy too fast, this is going to get rid of any single bit of that. By the way, none of these products are sponsored, but I will list every single product I use in this video in the description box below. So if you want to know all the products I used, they will be listed in the description box below. So as you can see, I focused that product on the roots only. I did not put anything on my hair and I thoroughly worked that in. And then next I'm going in with my Purology Nano Works Shampoo. Shampoo. This is sulfate free, but it is extremely cleansing as well. It's just not as harsh as any sulfate or cleansing shampoo, of course, because it is sulfate free. But this really, really cleans the hair while leaving it feeling very soft as well. Luckily, both of these shampoos leave your hair feeling soft. You don't want anything that's going to severely dry your hair out because it will make your silk press reverse revert way faster because it's going to be looking for so much moisture from the air because it will be so dry. So just like the first time, as you can see, I'm only putting this shampoo on the roots of my hair. And once I feel like my scalp is thoroughly cleansed and it is as clean as possible, you can see how much lather is there as well. Then I bring that lather down to the rest of my hair and that will rinse off any oils, any product that's sitting on my hair. You do not need to put shampoo directly on your hair even if you're doing a silk press. Just focus on the roots, the rest will take care of itself, okay? So now I'm doing everything that I did to that first section to every other section, and I highly suggest working in sections, whether you have fine hair, whether you have thick hair, whether you have long hair or short hair. Now I'm going in with my favorite deep conditioner of all time. You might know this if you've been here before. This is the Amica Soul Food Nourishing Mask. I absolutely love this mask because it always leaves my hair so soft. So first I take one nice blob and I focus that on my mid shafts and ends, sort of like how I applied the pre pull in the beginning. I'm focusing this on all my hair shaft, but not on the roots. And I'm just working that in and then I get the same amount. And now I focus that on my roots and any areas that are more exposed to the elements which would usually cause dryness which is like around the edges of my part and then in between I distribute it very nice and evenly and once I feel like it's distributed well enough I will go ahead and I will just finger detangle. Now this is why it's important to work in sections because you might if you don't work in sections you could miss out on some patches or some spots that you wouldn't really notice if your hair was just in one big clump. So at least a minimum of two sections would be ideal. And then of course, four sections is more like, you know, the best option. So once I feel like everything is worked in, I went ahead and just lightly finger detangled, no brushes at this point, because we are trying to reduce the manipulation as much as possible because 
we will be manipulating our hair a lot. So I always like to twist my sections and kind of like force the product into the hair once I've added the deep conditioner. And then I move on to the next section. And here I just wanted to show you that even though I just shampooed my hair, I still go in and thoroughly saturate my hair with water before I go ahead and add my deep conditioner because it just works into my hair and spreads so much easier. I also go ahead and put a little extra on my hairline because, you know, hairlines are delicate. They can get dry because of washing our faces every day. So I always make sure to put a little extra product there. Then I put on my plastic cap and I went under heat for 20 minutes. I didn't show that, but this is about 20 minutes later and now it's time to rinse out that conditioner and now we are in the actual detangling stage but i don't detangle with my deep conditioner i detangle with my conditioner which is the purology nano works conditioner which is the matching conditioner to the shampoo we used earlier on now here again you don't have to use a deep conditioner and a conditioner if you don't want to or if you don't have it you can just do your detangling process with your same deep conditioner of course hopefully it has enough slip but i prefer to actually use this this conditioner to detangle as well as add another conditioning step to my routine i've been doing this for about two months now and I've actually noticed a big difference so I'm continuing to use it. So now it is time to detangle and I'm using the Tangle Teaser with a handle. I am absolutely in love with this and I can't believe I waited this long to get myself one with a handle. I would definitely be buying myself a backup one and just notice the angle that I'm holding at. I'm holding it at while I'm detangling. If you have hair that's very curly or difficult to detangle, Holding the brush at that angle is so much better than just going straight sideways. Now, after I rinse that out, I am now adding my Purology Leave-In Conditioner. I'm adding about four to five sprays per section. This is very lightweight, and when you add it to your hair, it should feel like there's nothing in your hair. You don't want anything to wear your hair down when you're doing a silk press, but it is amazing for detangling, and it makes the hair shiny. It's a heat protectant. It does so many things, and... I am absolutely in love with it. Now to top that off, I'm using the Olaplex number six and I'm using one pump per section. I know I am using quite a bit of products, but this is what worked for me and this is what's given me the best silk press ever. So I will continue with this routine. So again, I'm continuing with that Olaplex. I'm brushing that in as well for even distribution. And just so you notice, if you can see that my hair is like getting, my brush is getting caught at the ends. And if you're detangling your hair and that happens with you when you're brushing your hair, it's not because your hair is just too difficult to detangle or you're using the wrong brush. Sometimes yes, but mostly it's because you have a lot of split ends that you need to get rid of, which I will be getting rid of, okay? So I also go under heat under plastic, but I also go under a microfiber towel so that it can catch any dripping water. I do this with my leave-in conditioner just because it absorbs way better into my thick, low porosity hair. I leave this in my hair for 20 minutes before moving on to the blow dry stage. So after I left that in, we are going to switch locations and it's time to actually start this thing now, right? Now, before I actually blow dry, I take the plastic cap off. Then I go ahead and put this same microfiber towel. It's from Coco and Eve, by the way. And I just put this on my hair now, directly on my hair, so that it can absorb any excess water and any excess product that doesn't need to be there because we are going to go in with more products now to start the blow dry section. And we are starting with one product, which is new to my routine. This was actually the first time I have ever used it. And guys, I'm going to do a separate review on this product on its own. Again, purchased with my own money because it is amazing. So here, again, I will be working in four sections, except I'll be dividing these sections into smaller sections. So that back section, I divided it into two and I'm now applying the Color Wow. This is the product I'm so impressed with. First of all, the reason why I dis divided my hair like this is because the packaging says you should be very, very generous with this product. So I wanted to do exactly that. Yes, it is expensive, but I was like, if I go light-handed, then, you know, 
I'm not really going to get the full effect. So I really wanted to saturate my hair. And that's why I also wanted to get out any excess water so that this can actually redampen my hair. So once I put that in, I am brushing it through to distribute it. And then I'm twisting that up. Then I'm going to go ahead and do that to every single subsection. And the reason why I'm twisting the hair like this is because instead of parting my hair when I blow dry, because my hair is too thick and curly to just blow dry in four big sections. I have to blow dry in smaller sections. So I prefer to just put any heat protectant or any product like this in the sections that I will blow dry so that when it's time to blow dry, all I have to do is undo that one twist and blow dry the entire twist section. So as you can see, I added that really well into every section. And now I'm just covering the sections that I won't be blow drying with my plastic cap because I don't want to re-wet them. I just want them to stay damp. And as you can see, I'm using two and I'm using my hair clips to like hold it in. And then I'm starting my blow dry session and I'm starting with my first twist. And then we're going to work our way up. Now, I did have a couple of challenges that you're going to see during this blow dry session, but it all works out in the end. So just hang tight, okay? So I always start off my blow dry sessions with my wet brush. This is my favorite brush specifically for doing my ends and making them straight. And I'm using my GHD blow dryer, and this is on the highest heat and the highest setting. This always gives me the best results and it's what works best. It also allows me to use less heat or less passes when I'm doing my flat iron. So don't be scared of the heat from the blow dryer. So as you can see, it works really well to like get those ends straight, especially when you have some damaged ends, it's pretty difficult to make them like stretch out as much as possible. So I like to start with the end. So here I tried the tangle teaser brush that I was using in the shower and I realized that the heat was bending the bristles. So I went back to the wet brush to finish the drying process. And then afterwards I figured, okay, now this is my favorite part. I always use a Denman brush for the smoothing stage to make my blow dry as smooth as possible. And this is a new Denman brush that I bought on Amazon, which I do not recommend. I was like, Ooh, it's yellow. It kind of gives me dry bar aesthetic, you know, dry bar vibes. And I really liked it. It was blow drying my hair straight, just the way I like it. And then at this point, something started to feel weird and I'm like, why does the brush feel like that? Okay. And I always blow dry my hair like this. I understand that the nozzle is actually touching the brush here, which I don't usually make it touch, but sometimes it does touch the brush. But here I was like, what's going on? I look at the brush and the Denman actually split in half. Like, can you imagine this day just, it did not want to work. By the way, power went for like two hours before this too. So my Danman split in half and this told me that this was absolutely a fake. So I went back to my old trusty Danman brush, which is kind of falling apart, but it's fine because I've had this brush for years now. This is the black Danman and the one I actually recommend. So I will not even link the yellow one because I don't want you to buy it by mistake. Okay. So I just had to go through a little bit with that old Danman, but it's kind of like falling apart. So most of this blow dry was just done with my wet brush. And this is what the hair looked like after the blow dry. That was as straight as I could get it. And then what I like to do is just tie my hair up. And then after I tie it, with a satin scrunchie, by the way. It was so thick and so much, it was very difficult to tie up, but I did do it. And then I wrap my ponytail around itself and then just tie another satin scrunchie on top. And I actually kept this overnight because I always do my silk press over two days because I do not have time to do it in a single day, especially when I'm filming, it's exhausting. So this was the end of my silk press day one. The blow dry was done. I try and make it as neat as possible so it doesn't like frizz up like crazy. Went to sleep with my hair like that, but in an even looser bun, you can see how exhausted I was. And this is day two. And here is my new baby, the Babyliss Pro Nano Titanium Prima 3000 in one and a quarter inch, I think. This is a titanium flat iron and I will do a whole story time and everything about this flat iron. However, Getting into it, I highly recommend a titanium flat iron, but only if you know what you're doing. Here's what my blow dry looks like from the back the next day. As you can see, it's not like a big poofy mess. It's kind of similar to how it was before. And now I'm dividing my hair into four sections again, except this time I'm making sure the sections are very even and I'll explain why in a second. But back to the flat iron, 
if you are not experienced, if you've never flat ironed your own hair, if you are scared of heat damage, if you are not sure how to use a flat iron correctly, do not go for titanium because this one is more of a high risk because it gets hotter, but it makes your hair sleeker. I'm going in with the Olaplex number no. nine heat protection serum and I pumped in a little bit too much. So I just got like half of it because again, you don't want to use too much product because it will make your hair heavy. I rub that between my palms and it's actually more of like a creamy texture. It emulsifies once you rub it between your palms. So it's not like a bio silk type of serum. So that little bit, I put it all over my hair, starting at the ends always, and then working it up and then just brushing that through before I start sectioning for the flat iron. So again, if you are not sure how to use a silk press, if, if you're not sure how to use a flat iron or you're scared to use a flat iron, if you're trying to learn, please try and learn with ceramic. And then once you get comfortable, you can move on to titanium because this is something that's more targeted at, for professional use and there's more room for error. So you have a higher chance for heat damage if you don't know what you're doing. For me, I have been using a ceramic flat iron for a long time. Look how terrible my ends look. <laughs> but yes, I've been using a ceramic for so long, I know exactly what I'm doing, so I was ready to upgrade to the nano titanium, okay? So I'm using this brush right here. It is a bristle brush. It's not bore bristle, it is plastic. I would actually suggest you use something that is bore bristle or heat resistant because it will melt onto the flat iron if you make it touch, which is what I noticed after my first pass. So if you do use a brush like mine, just make sure that when you are chasing, this is the chase method, when you are chasing the flat iron, just keep a small distance between so that the flat iron doesn't touch the brush or the comb that you're using because you don't want melted plastic in your hair. It didn't cause any melted plastic in my hair on the first pass, but I did notice that just a few dots melted onto the iron and I just wiped it off. So now, as you can see, I'm doing about one to four passes right on the roots, and then I'm doing one slow pass down the hair. I never do more than one pass on the rest of the hair. However, the roots can take a little bit more heat because that is the newest part of your hair. It is the strongest part of your hair. It is also probably the most heat resistant because that's where your curls are super curly. So I make sure I take very small even sections and I was using that rat tail comb to make even sections. And the reason why you want even sections is because the heat is going to be distributed across the hair very evenly. It won't be like too much heat at one point and then too little at another point. It's going to be very even across the board. So make sure you take sections that are as even as possible and only do one pass down the hair. There's no need to do two or three passes. Also, I didn't address the heat. This is on the highest heat setting. I know, crazy, dangerous, heat damage. If you think I'm gonna get heat damage, please subscribe so you can see when my hair reverts back to curly and see that there'll be no heat damage, okay? This is what the first section looked like. Straightest my hair has ever looked. Softest, shiniest. This feels even better than when my hair was relaxed. To be honest, I never liked how my, my hair felt when it was relaxed, but this feels amazing, smooth, shiny. The combination of all these products together with this flat iron is totally amazing because even though you saw how bad my ends were and like so, so terrible, my ends look pretty good, I must say, with this flat iron. Don't worry, I will be cutting them off, but I'm just saying, if your ends are not looking the best, this flat iron is gonna have them at least looking good for a little bit. Also, I find that if my ends are as straight as they possibly can be with a flat iron, it allows me to actually see the real split ends and the real damage. Sometimes your ends may just be frizzy and then you mistake them for split ends because you didn't straighten your hair properly and now you're cutting hair that you don't need to cut, okay? Cut as much as you need to, but as little as you have to, okay? So now I'm just gonna add in a couple more clips of just me straightening my hair. I find it very satisfying watching people straighten their hair. So here's a little short intermission as I straighten a couple more pieces of my hair. These days, I don't really care for all that empty conversation. No, no. These days, I don't care for competition. You're the one that's racing. No, I don't really want to talk about what I got coming out next. I'm not 
not showing up to one up just to show up in front of your friends. I don't really want to meet you all out just to have something to post about. Lately, I get real exhausted by the thought of having to pretend that I had a good time with someone who's just interested in what I got and not who I am. I ain't got. So that last piece was done. You can see my hair has flow, it has movement, but it's also a little heavy looking. That's not because of product, it's because of my damaged ends. Can you see that? I changed into a white t-shirt so that I could see my ends properly and I'm using professional hair cutting shears. That's some of the hair I cut from the back and then I was point cutting in the front. I didn't show my whole cutting process because it actually took me a long time, but I will do a separate video talking all about the cut and why I cut my hair like this and all that. But anyway, it was a great cut, the best cut I have ever got that I gave to myself. Look how my hair is moving now. So much body, it looks so much healthier. To me, this looks like the longest my hair has ever been, and it's not, but it looks that way because it's the healthiest it has ever been and my ends have been the healthiest ever. Now I'm just going in and putting some curls and this is not on the highest heat. I dropped it to like 350 or 410, something like that. I dropped the heat because of course my hair is already straight. I just needed to throw in a couple curls to do the job and my ends are just like perfectly crisp. The hair is bouncy, it is flowy, it is shiny. As I record this, it is five days later and it literally looks like I pressed my hair today. To finish it off, I'm using my favorite Kerastas hair oil and as you can see, that was not even a full pump. I distribute it evenly across both my palms and then I'm only putting it on my ends and the mid shafts of the hair and this just instantly absorbs. I know it's an oil, but it's almost like a moisturizer that doesn't have water in it. Your ends will just your ends will just drink up all the moisture instantly and it makes your ends feel and look so smooth and bouncy and shiny. I highly recommend that oil. Natural hair, straight hair, it doesn't matter. That oil is a game changer and look at the bounce, look at the shine. Subscribe if you didn't. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.